Hello, everyone. Hopefully you can all hear me. Uh, welcome to uh, uh, GRC 303, Simplify Compliance with AWS Cloud Operations. Appreciate you taking your time to uh, spend a session with us today. Uh, so my name is Mark Bykowski. I am one of the uh, Senior Cloud Operations Specialists here at AWS. Hi, everyone. And my name is Mustafa Borghi. I'm a security consultant working with AWS Professional Services. So, uh, so today, I just wanted to cover a bit of the uh, of the agenda with you. Uh, we'll talk very briefly about uh, kind of what is AWS Cloud Ops. Uh, uh, talk about some of the challenges of compliance in complex uh, um, complex environments, and and then get into the construct of how our services enable that automation and compliance. Uh, but we'll actually spend the bulk of the of the session today with uh, Mustafa going through some specific use cases and demos, uh, really walking you through how those services work, and close with some takeaways and uh, resources that we'll leave you. So, so just to kind of kick off, I think uh, every one of us can relate with the fact that uh, uh, once you move to the cloud, really operations and compliance becomes a paradise. Uh, everything that you had to worry about in your old on-prem environments is, is is automatically taken care of. You can just live. Live, live your life, sit back, have a beer, and enjoy everything. Obviously, a bit of sarcasm there, so uh, uh, it, sh it just brings a different set of challenges, right? Uh, all of the uh, all the benefits that come along with the cloud of speed and agility uh, come with another set of challenges when it comes to maintaining a compliant en environment. So hopefully, uh, in today's session, we'll give you some tools and, and uh, uh, techniques to, uh, to help, help uh, improve your lives there. So just to set a little bit of context, so we're not going to dive deep into the overall construct of AWS cloud operations, um, but at the end of the uh, session, we'll leave you with some resources that you can uh, uh, you can dive into that a bit. Um, but just to, suffice it to say, AWS cloud ops was a, a, a construct uh, that we launched last year that, um, similar to DevOps, IT ops, et, et cetera, uh, basically a, a construct to put, a, to, to put around enabling, sustaining, build and migrating uh, uh, resources, and of course, operating those resources on AWS and even hybrid environments, which we'll get into a, in a second. So today's session, of course, will focus on the, the operations and compliance piece of that. So, what are some of the challenges that we run into uh, with customers uh, in complex or in hybrid environments? And what I mean by a hybrid environment is that's really any combination of AWS resources, on-prem resources, uh, uh, IoT and edge resources, and even other cloud provider resources. So, uh, of course, these you know, having those types of complex environments bring with their own st set of challenges. First off, we see uh, customers struggling with uh, manual processes, right? Le legacy processes that, that have been developed over, over years, either manual or manumated, that just simply don't scale across, uh, across the cloud, namely with the agility that you, that you get. Um, and of course, then that gets multiplied with multiple different types of environments. Uh, historically, each environment that you operate re uh, can require its own set of tools, uh, which then further complicates things. And of course, that, that just uh, ultimately re, um, uh, leads to com complicating your overall compliance uh, operations. So what can we do about it? And uh, so, so what, what I'll do here is I'll, I'll introduce the, the, the construct of how the different services work together. But like I said, we'll spend the bulk of the time with uh, uh, Mustafa actually showing you uh, to, to bring some realities to it. So, so building up from the, from the bottom, uh, what we look, what we look at is enabling you to automate operations across any of those uh, environments. So uh, uh, we'll talk a lot about Sy AWS Systems Manager today, uh, which is kind of the core service that glues all of this stuff together. Um, but uh, as some of you may know, Systems Manager is an agent-based uh, tool. Uh, so basically, wherever you install that agent, you you can manage whether that's AWS, uh, on-prem, uh, IoT, et cetera, as as we mentioned before. Building on that, what we do is integrate and aggregate the data across the various different different source services. So services like Config, CloudWatch, CloudTrail, um, uh, and Amazon EventBridge, all pulling pulling those into uh, into Systems Manager, so you so you get a, a single uh, pane of glass, if you will, into the uh, the state of your resources. And here's really where where automation comes in. 
So, so as we talked about before, one of the keys to success in compliance and operations in such a complex environment is automating those repetitive and compliance related activities. Uh, so out of the box, we have uh, about th uh, actually over 300 different automation runbooks uh, within Systems Manager, uh, uh, over 100 of which are dedicated purely to compliance. So you can use these, the, uh, these predefined automation runbooks or build your own. And, and like I said, we'll get into to some uh, examples of those uh, later on. Um, one of the uh, interesting aspects here is you can run, you can have Systems Manager run those automation runbooks in the context of a delegated ad admin. And basically wh what that means is instead of granting individuals access to run those, those automations, you can, uh, you can use, use delegated admin, which lets you reduce the number of individuals that have to have access to those resources, helping your security uh, posture and compliance. So on top of that, here's where your, uh, where your IT processes come in. Uh, we'll talk about some of the Systems Manager specific capabilities, but uh, uh, so for example, change, uh, Systems Manager Change Manager lets you define change management templates, um, what, types, what, what types of changes, who needs to approve those changes, whether it's an automatic approval or individual approvals, and then the, ex the actual execution through either automation documents or manual steps, uh, and of course reporting of, of, of that. Similarly, event management uh, through Systems Manager Ops Center lets you create ops items uh, from the data that we talked about below, uh, triggered through a, a cloud, CloudWatch uh, uh, rule, for example, uh, or a, a alarm, which can then trigger, uh, uh, trigger follow-on actions from, uh, from a resource or an automation runbook. And again, we'll show some examples of that. Uh, closely related to that is Incident Manager which can then ingest those, uh, those cloud ops items, or sorry, those uh, uh, ops center items and create inc incidents around those which you can, you can define response plans, who needs to be paged, wh when do they need to be paged, what automation documents are associated with those incidents, um, what's the, what is the uh, status of the resources involved, what actions are, uh, are what, what automation documents are associated with resolving those in incidents, um, and so on and so forth. So, and that, then of course at the end, you get all of that data to effectively populate your root cause analysis and prevent future incidents. And then lastly, uh, on, on the right, the node management, uh, I, I like to call it our, our uh, uh, toolbox of, uh, of services within Systems Manager. So this, this is things like uh, patch manager, session management, which allows you to do uh, remote access uh, uh, to, to your sessions. Uh, there are a variety of different things. We'll, we'll share se several different examples, but that allow you to, again, trigger automation or manual resolution of, of those issues. So then layering on top of that, uh, if you're running an ITSM solution such as uh, uh, ServiceNow or Jira Service Management, uh, we, we do have the Service Management Connector, which gives you bi-directional uh, integration with, with most of the capabilities that we're talking about here. So if that's your system of record, you don't have to worry about then either creating interfaces or manually copying data from one system to another to, to get your ITSM solution updated. One other aspect I wanted to share is, uh, from, so from a, uh, a lens perspective, if you will, you can, you can look at all of this, uh, all of this data and, and actions from either an application and workload perspective with uh, Systems Manager Application Manager. So you can define your applications as log logical groupings of resources, um, either through, through say, uh, tags, uh, for example. Um, or at the resource and fleet level with, with Fleet Manager. So depending on the construct of your, of your group and your interests, um, you can look at them both of those ways. And of course, to wrap it all, wrap it all up uh, from, a, from an overall compliance perspective, uh, of, of course we have AWS Config, which, which is our compliance solution, and we also have AWS Audit Manager, which gathers up the data from all of the activity that we just talked about uh, to give you one, one place uh, or one source, source of truth for audit purposes. So, and I think it's worth mentioning that these, these solutions, uh, these services can all be used uh, standalone or they can be used together. Of course, as you'll see, the power really comes uh, from using more of them together to form an overall ops solution. So now, I'm gonna turn it over to Mustafa to really talk about how do we actually get there and show you some real world examples. All right, thanks Mark. Uh, 
everybody can hear me okay? Okay. So to make it easier for you to understand this journey to Alps Paradise, we framed it into uh, a set of use cases. And each use case is defined by a question. So usually a first typical question that we get from customers is that they want to understand their compliance requirements when it comes to running AWS uh, workloads. Uh, and they don't understand what is their responsibility versus AWS's responsibility. So security and compliance, uh, when it comes to running workloads on AWS, is a shared responsibility between AWS and the customer. So AWS protects the infrastructure that runs the different services that you, the customers, consume. And your responsibility is determined by the services that you use. If I take, for example, the Amazon EC2 uh, service, the customer responsibility is to secure the guest OS, for example, the software that runs uh, inside the EC2 instance to filter traffic. And AWS's responsibility is to secure the virtualization layer, the host operating system, the networking pieces, the physical facility. And if you take an abstracted service, for example, Amazon S3 or Amazon DynamoDB, your responsibility as a customer is the data, right? So you need to, uh, for example, encrypt the data. Uh, you need to design proper access control mechanisms. Whereas AWS's responsibility is to secure the software, Amazon S3 or Amazon DynamoDB, secure the OS and all the layers down to the physical facility itself, right? Uh, so you might ask, okay, so how can I give my auditors assurance that uh, uh, basically AWS is doing their job when it comes to securing and protecting this infrastructure? And you can do that through AWS Artifact. So AWS Artifact is a managed service that's free for you. It's accessible from the AWS console. Uh, it enables you to download security and compliance documents such as ISO, certifications, for example, PCI DSS or uh, SOC reports from the console. And <coughs> you can, sorry, you can use them uh, to, uh, for example, demonstrate security and compliance of the AWS services that you use in your workloads when it comes to submitting those to your auditors as audit artifacts or, or to your regulators, for example. And you can use also these documents as guidelines to evaluate your own cloud architecture against your internal requirements, for example. So let's see that in practice. So here I am in the AWS Management Console, and I will go to the AWS Artifact Console. So let's click on Artifact here. And when you open the service, you can click on View Reports on the top right, and you will get the list of all the available reports. Uh, you have the title of the report, the reporting period, and a short description, right? And you can use the search bar to search for, for example, a PCI DSS report, or for example, if you're, if you're interested in a SOC report, you can just type SOC2, you can select the report that you want to download, and you just hit download. And here you go, you downloaded a PDF format of your SOC2 report, and you can give it to your auditors, right, as an audit artifact. So once the customers understand this, this piece, right, the shared responsibility between them and AWS, they ask about the controls, right, and how to implement the compliance checks. And before doing so, they want visibility inside their environment because you cannot measure what you cannot see, basically. So the ask is, how can I get continuous visibility into my AWS environment? And to do that, we're going to cover four services, right? I will start with AWS Config, uh, which gives you a detailed view of all the resources uh, that are associated with your account, and it will record and normalize the changes in configurations or relationships between these resources. And we'll see it later on. You can check those changes against a desired state, right? And you can also send notifications on a configuration changes, for example. You can use uh, the config API to interact with config, whether through the management console, the command line interface, 
or the AWS SDK. And you can store also the history of co the configuration as snapshots inside an S3 bucket. So we're talking about JSON files, basically. So let's see that in practice. So here, I'm in the AWS config console. Config is already enabled. So I'll go to settings just to show you basically the different settings when it comes to enabling config. So let's go to edit. And as you can see, I record all the events in my region, including the global events. I can send the events uh, to uh, a S3 bucket, right? I can use a uh, IAM role that is created by config for me, right? And that's about it. So once config is enabled, it will start discovering your resources inside your account. So you can access your resources from here. You can filter, for example, on an EC2 uh, instance to display all your EC2 instances. And you can view the configuration item right here. So it's JSON. You have the relationships uh, that this EC2 has with other resources. For example, the subnet the EC2 instance is running in, any security groups that are associated with the EC2 instance, and the configuration settings of the EC2 instance itself. Right. Since it's JSON, you can query it. Right, so you can use advanced queries. Uh, we provide you with sample queries that you can use, or you can build your own, right? So you can start from an, a sample query, you can build your own, you can save it, you can run it afterwards. For example, here on the screen, I can query my EC2 instances and group them by instance type. So you can, for example, issue a query saying, hey, give me all the Windows servers running in my environment across my accounts, for example, if you have a config aggregator set up. All right, so the next service I will cover is AWS CloudTrail. With config, we've seen that it records the configuration changes and the relationships changes, right? And CloudTrail is the place where you find who made the change, when, what was the change, was it uh, successful or not, and what are the parameters actually accompanying this change. So CloudTrail will track user activity, uh, it will uh, record your API calls, and it issues or exports these events as log files into S3. And you can also export CloudTrail logs, for example, to CloudWatch. You can issue SNS notifications, and then you can use AWS Partner Solution to process and analyze those logs. And you can also use CloudTrail Lake, which, is, which was a recent feature announced, uh, I believe, uh, this year. Oh, or the previous year, uh, which basically allows you to store immutable events for up to seven years. Right? Once stored, those events are there, so you can run complex queries you know, using SQL across multiple fields and across regions. So let's go to the CloudTrail console. This is the dashboard, right? It gives you a few information. Keep in mind, when you open an account, CloudTrail is already enabled for you. You get access to the event history, right? So the event history has the last 90 days activity of your account. And you can use the event history to filter on specific fields, okay? So let's go to the event history and we can filter, for example, let's see, on event name, uh, create bucket, for example. So let's select event name. Let's go to create bucket. All right. You got a few, let's select one. So you will get the parsed data, and then you get the raw event in JSON format. So basically you can process it. Uh, you can use it, for example, with your analytics tools, and you get also the information about the TLS version, if this is something interesting for you, for example, to demonstrate compliance that you're running only a specified version of TLS. So if we go to CloudTrail Lake now, uh, in order to start writing queries, you need an event data store. So basically, an in in event data store is telling CloudTrail, please record all management events or all data events across my regions. And once you have an event data store, you can start writing your SQL queries. We provide you with sample queries that you can use out of the box, or you can customize those queries uh, for you to use, and you can save them for later usage as well. For example, here we're looking at uh, all the API calls that Bob issued between uh, in a period of time. So you can run those, you can export the results, 
And basically, it's something that you can do within CloudTrail itself, right? And you get the history of all the activity also that occurred in the CloudTrail Lake concept. So with CloudTrail Lake, you can search across your CloudTrail logs, across regions, across fields. But customers also asked us, how about searching across log sources, not only CloudTrail, right? How can I do that? So the answer to that is using CloudWatch. So CloudWatch logs specifically. So CloudWatch is a monitoring service. It has many capabilities amongst which are mentioned here. For example, CloudWatch metrics to define metrics. You can use metrics then to uh, trigger alarms. You can have X-ray traces uh, to monitor your serverless workloads, for example. And I want to focus specifically on AWS CloudWatch logs because this is where you centralize your logs. This is where you view the logs from different sources. The logs are treated as a uh, single flow of log events that are ordered by time. So regardless of the source, these are just logs, data, ordered by time, which means that you can search through different sources. You can create metric filters you can create dashboards, right? Or you can export the results, for example, to feed uh, another, uh, uh, another service that you use. So let's see that in practice here. So this is the AWS CloudWatch uh, console. On the left pane, you can see that we have uh, many capabilities, as I mentioned, but we will focus on the logs part, and specifically the log groups and the logs insights. All right, so if we go to logs group, uh, we can see the different uh, logs group that they have. And you can see they have a CloudTrail log group there as well. And if I want to search across these log groups, I want to use Logs Insights, right? So Logs Insights gives you the capability to search through different log groups. Here I will select only the CloudTrail one, but you can see that I can select more than one. And on the right-hand side, we give you sample queries. These are written in a uh, purpose-built language, which is simple, but it's still powerful, right? So we give you many examples. For here, uh, I'm running a query to check if there are any API calls that use TLS version one or TLS version 1.1. I don't have any results, luckily. I can also check the other queries that I have. I mean, for example, uh, if you're interested in knowing uh, the uh, API calls issued against EC2 across regions, it's something that you can do. And with the results, basically, you can add them to the dashboard as a widget, or you can, you can export the results also uh, in CSV format or in markdown format, for example, for uh, any software that supports Markdown. All right, so to bring all these services together, I'm gonna now talk about AWS Systems Manager capabilities, right? And AWS Systems Manager is your centralized hub when it comes to operations. And the first capability here is the Explorer. So basically this is your dashboard. Uh, you can customize it, you can add uh, or remove any ops data that you want to see when you open AWS Systems Manager. Ops Center is where you create ops items. So an ops item basically say you have an issue with a resource and you want to track it to remediate it. So you create an ops item and you uh, add a resource to it. So basically Ops Center will automatically add monitoring data CloudTrail data, config data to that uh, ops item. You can also use Application Manager, as mentioned earlier. Uh, if you are an app manager, for example, and you want visibility on your application across services, say, for example, you have a workload that uses API Gateway, that uses S3, that uses AWS uh, Amazon DynamoDB and AWS Lambda functions, and you want that view across the services, well, Application Manager actually gives you that possibility. So you can view the ops data related to your application across the services. You get access to the logs, you get access to the ops items that have those resources related to them, right? You get access to compliance data. If you have any uh, compliance checks already defined, 
and that pertains to those resources. And if you want to get visibility across the servers that run uh, in AWS or in other environments with a system agent uh, uh, attached to them, you can use Fleet Manager. So basically, Fleet Manager is your server fleet management system uh, that can uh, help you with any administrative tasks when it comes to managing compute nodes at scale. So let's see that in practice in the console. All right. So here I'm in the AWS Systems Manager console, okay? And you can see on the left pane that there are many capabilities. I'm not gonna cover all of those, but specifically the ones I listed in the previous slide. So let's start with the Explorer, right? So the Explorer is your dashboard. This is where you view your data, your ops items, if they're open, closed, your compliance, um, data when it comes to your EC2 instances, for example. You can view your instances by AMI, your instances count, and any other information that you want to add. So you can do that in here by enabling or disabling ops data sources. So as you can see here, I have a few enabled. Let's go now to application manager. And this is where I mentioned earlier that you can have a view on your workload uh, regardless of the AWS service that is being used. So for example, you can define an, a workload using a specific tag, or you can say, I'm using CloudFormation, so my application is a stack. In this example, it's a WordPress blog. So you can view the ops items that are related uh, to my application. You get an, a, a view on the cost, actually, of the services that are being used. So basically, you can view all the resources that compose your application. Uh, this is CloudFormation stack, so you get the view on the provisioning side of things. You get compliance information as well, uh, whether it's using config or not. And you can get the uh, alarms status as well. Uh, and uh, when it comes to ops items, you can view also that we have one open item here. And also you can access the logs directly from here. So you don't need to go to CloudWatch logs and search for your application logs. All right, let's go now to uh, Fleet Manager. And with Fleet Manager, basically, you can view your instances running in EC2 or uh, elsewhere with an agent. And on each node, you can have the inventory detail, for example. You can also view the patches that have been installed and if there are any missing patches, right? So you get all the patches, the latest update uh, date as well. And when it comes to configuration compliance, you get that info here as well. And you can see that I have one uncompliant item, for example, in here, right? And let's go back now to Ops Center. And this is where I showed you earlier that I had one Ops item open. So let's look at it. So this Ops item pertains to a specific EC2 instance. It's under related resources, right? And the good thing here is that I can run any automation runbook right from here. I can select one and execute. I get uh, to add any operational data manually, for example, and I can view the related resources details. For example, if I have metrics, uh, or if I have like CloudTrail data, or the EC2 instance settings, actually. I don't need to go to the EC2 console to view the settings of my instance. I get also to view uh, the uh, config relationships, the subnets, the EC2 groups, security groups, sorry, and the CloudTrail logs that involve that EC2 instance, right? So with this, basically, AWS Systems Manager brings CloudTrail, Config, and CloudWatch together under Application Manager. So you don't need to go in each service, right, to view the data that pertains to your application. You can do that right from AWS Systems Manager. Right. And this is how you get that visibility that you want across the control plane, but also the data plane of your workloads. All right, so now that you know basically how to get that visibility, you are able to start measuring things, right? Uh, so the, this, usually the, the, uh, this as comes as, a, uh, as formulated here, it's about building automated checks, right? So these checks 
needs to be automated. And perhaps if we can help, you know, we can also provide you with the resources to do that. So to, to create these detective controls, as they call them, you can use AWS config rules, right? We've seen earlier that config basically records the configuration changes and the relationships changes as well in a consistent and normalized configuration item. And basically, once you have that configuration item, you can check it and evaluate it against a desired state, okay? So to do that, we provide you with managed rules. So these are written and maintained by AWS for you. You can use them out of the box. I think there are over uh, 270 rules as I speak right now. But if you don't find uh, a rule that meets your need, you can write your own rules and you can use a custom rule, right? A custom rule can be written using an AWS Lambda function. So basically here, if you're down for writing Python code or Java or uh, Node.js, you're good to go. Or you can use also CloudFormation guard policies, which require less, I'd say, uh, coding skills. So let's, let's see that in practice. So I'm in the AWS config console here, okay? Let's go to uh, the left pane and let's go to the rules. You can see that I already created some rules. Let's create an add rule. I can choose which rule type I want to create. So for now, I'm going to focus on managed rules, right? And you can see that I can use a search bar here. So let's look for any IAM related rules. For example, uh, access keys rotation to check the access keys age. So I can use one, I can review basically uh, the settings. It's a periodic rule. So it checks every day uh, that the access keys are uh, rotated and uh, the rule is created. I can show you also another rule uh, that checks uh, the S3 settings at, a, at an account level and a custom rule also that I created earlier. So let's check uh, the settings here and I wanna show you uh, the resources uh, which are DynamoDB tables and this rule checks if point in time recovery is enabled on the DynamoDB tables. So this is the rule content. It's written in CloudFormation Guard so we define first what active means because we want to check this setting on active tables, right? And an active table is a DynamoDB table. So we need to specify the resource type as well. And basically when it comes to checking the compliance, you want to check the specific attribute, which is point in time recovery status and compare it to a value, which is enabled. If the values match, then it's, a compliant rule, right? The rule will evaluate as compliant. If it does not match, the rule will evaluate as non-compliant, okay? So this rule is triggered by resource changes, which means that whenever there is a table creation or update, it gets uh, triggered or evaluated, right? And here you can see that uh, my tables basically are compliant. And with that, you can see precisely how you can write your own custom logic to evaluate a resource. And this was using CloudFormation Guard, right? So let's take a, a quick step back here. You know how to get visibility into your AWS environment across the different services, right? You know how to build checks, whether it's using a managed rule or writing a custom rule. And usually by this time, the question that we get from customers is that, all right, in order to scale, I want to respond and remediate to non-compliant items with automated actions. I cannot do it manually. I cannot scale, right? And the, uh, basically the answer to that is, uh, I mean, it depends on the remediation actions, right? And here as well, when it comes to remediating issues, you can use AWS Systems Manager different capabilities. For example, you can use run command to automate common administrative tasks, for example, and perform ad hoc configuration changes at scale, right? In a consistent, safe, and secure way. You can use automation runbooks 
So these are YAML-based documents that describe different steps that AWS SSM will execute on your behalf. You can also use Patch Manager to scan and apply a consistent patch baseline across your AWS environment. Say, for example, your workload has two environments, non-production and production. You want to have a patch baseline for non-production workloads, for example, that is applied automatically. And then for the production workloads, you want perhaps a manual approval before you push that button. And to get that manual approval or to define wor workflows, basically, that involve uh, human interaction, you can use Change Manager to perform a change that is safe and auditable for further you know, uh, usage or need. And basically, you can plug in Change Manager to ensure that any change that is uh, uh, occurring on a production environment has been reviewed before it happens, right? So for our, our specific use case, I'm going to focus on AWS config rules remediation using AWS SSM automation runbooks. So as said earlier, AWS config will record the configuration changes and issue those as consistent and normalized configuration items. You can evaluate those changes against a desired state. And then, depending on that evaluation, you will have the information whether the resource is compliant or not. So whenever there is a change in that compliance state, you get an event generated. And basically, you can respond with an AWS Lambda function if you want to code, or you can have native integration between AWS Config and AWS Systems Manager. And basically, when you use AWS Systems Manager, you select the automation runbook that you want to use to remediate this non-compliance. And as said before, uh, I think Mark mentioned it, we have over 150 automation runbooks that are dedicated to remediating non-compliant AWS config rules. So let's see that in practice here. So here, I'm in the AWS config console. So let's go to rules, okay? So I already defined a rule with a remediation action. It's my rule. So let's click on uh, remediation action. Let's view the details here. Let's click on edit. And basically you can see that it can be automatic remediation versus manual. Manual means that you can click a button in AWS config on a specific resource to trigger the remediation. So for automatic remediation, you can specify the ritualize, the period, and then under action here, this is where you can select the runbook that you want to run whenever the resource is non-compliant, okay? So here, obviously, I want to enable point-in-time recovery on a DynamoDB table, which means I want to select that one. And for AWS SSM to run properly, I need to provide a resource ID. So this is out of the box and an IAM role as well. So the action is run on my behalf, right? And if you go back to uh, the AWS config console here, you can see the DynamoDB tables that are created. You can see under action that the actions has run successfully, right? which means that at some point there has been a remediation that occurred and you can view the timeline of the resource. Basically, you can go back in time and you can check the configuration of the table and what change has uh, turned the resource into a compliant or non-compliant state. Right? So here you can see precisely the point in time recovery setting that it has been enabled at some point it has been disabled also at some point, right? And you can view precisely when was that, right? And you can access the event in CloudTrail right from here too, right? Uh, we're, go we're not gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna go to the AWS Systems Manager. I wanna show you the automation runbook actually. So it's gonna be some YAML code, please bear with me. So if you go to documents there, and if we search for the point in time recovery, so let's look for it. Let's select this one and let's switch to the content uh, tab, which gives you the, the YAML view. So basically you've got a description, 
you've got the inputs, it's the table ID, it's the IM uh, assume row uh, that you're going to use, and then you've got the main steps. So here I've got two steps. The first one is calling an API call to enable the point in time recovery. So this is the first step. The second step is to verify that my call, actually, is being successful. Because when it comes to remediating non-compliant resources, and you make an API call to do that, to remediate, you need to get a feedback, whether the call was successful or not. Because if the call was not successful, then you need to do something else, right? You need to notify, perhaps, somebody else. With this, basically, you get that feedback. Hey, the remediation run, it was successful, then there was a change on the resource, which means that the config rule will evaluate once again because it's triggered by a resource change, remember? So the table settings got updated, the config rule will reevaluate, and it will reevaluate to a compliant state, okay? So by now, basically, uh, you can get your visibility from AWS uh, using AWS Systems Manager across the AWS Config Service, AWS CloudTrail, AWS CloudWatch Logs. You know how to build a check to verify, for example, for a desired state, whether you're using AWS Config, sorry, config Rules, uh, uh, managed ones or custom built ones. And you can also remediate out of compliance items, right, automatically. And usually by, by this time, the, 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 the ask that we get from customers is that, hey, AWS, look, you've got all the information, right? Um, how about you help me centrally and automatically centralize, uh, gather evidence of my AWS resources usage? Because this is, what I want to give to my auditors, right? I want to give them evidence that is ready to consume. And to do that, AWS built AWS Audit Manager. So Audit Manager will continuously monitor your AWS resources usage and facilitate or simplify how you assess risk and compliance. So the way you do it, basically, you can review existing frameworks pre-built ones from the industry. You can customize those, or you can create your own frameworks, right? So each framework is based on a control set, right? So the control set can be a standard one, which is based on a pre-built framework, or it can be a custom one that you build, actually. Remember my AWS config custom rule? That rule can be used as a custom control in my control set, and it can be included in my framework. Once you have that framework, you can use it to create an assessment, right? So your assessment can be scoped to your account. It can be scoped if it's customized to specific AWS services. And then once the assessment is created, you can, for example, define an audit owner. So who's gonna be the audit owner, right? Or you can delegate the actions to different people or IAM roles, actually. And once the assessment is active, AWS Audit Manager will start gathering that evidence automatically for you. So it will pull the evidence. Once the evidence is ready, then you can start reviewing the evidence and you can start adding these evidence into an assessment report that is audit ready, actually. So let me first, before jumping to the demo, let me just repeat what I just said. Okay, so remember, an assessment is based on a framework, right? A framework can be a pre-built one. Basically, we provide you with a framework. So the framework actually contains the control sets that are based on a standard, or you can build a custom framework, which means that your custom framework is using a custom control set, right? So a control is, for example, an AWS config rule or an AWS custom config rule, right? So once you have that defined, you can start uh, activating your assessment. And then AWS Audit Manager will start pulling data from several data sources, right? 
Of course, you can upload manual evidence, right? But uh, the, uh, I'd say the, 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 the true force of the service is that it will automatically gather data from AWS CloudShare, AWS Config, for example. If you're using Security Hub, it will gather data from Security Hub as well. And it will make API calls also, depending on the controls that you have. So let's see that in practice here. So this is the AWS Audit Manager console, okay? I already have a few assessments. So let's go and create a new one. Let's go to assessments. All right. And let's create an assessment. So we can give it a name. So it's going to be my assessment, for example. Uh, you can give it a meaningful description as well. And you can specify in which S3 bucket you will going to store the report. And then under frameworks here, you can filter on custom to select a custom framework, right? Or you can just select a standard uh, or a framework from the rebuilt ones. So I selected PCI DSS. Here's my scope. As you can see, the services are already pre-checked for us because this is a pre-built framework, right? And I get to select who is the audit owner. So this is an IAM role, basically, which means that many people can assume this IAM role, right? Which means that you can delegate this activity to more than one person and you get to review. Uh, keep in mind, it takes up to 24 hours for audit manager to gather the evidence from the AWS uh, environment. And here, as you can see, you can see the control sets are already populated. Of course, I have zero evidence because I just created the assessment, but I already created one earlier. So let's go and, and view this one. It's uh, for ISO uh, 27K1 standard. I already have some evidence, right? And uh, I can. Uh, I already added some evidence which has been reviewed to my report, which means I can click generate report to get a PDF report that is e easy to consume by uh, my auditors as well. So it's in progress. I already had one, uh, so you can click on it and you can just download it. And here you go. You have a compressed version of your PDF report that you can use and send to your auditors, right? And basically here, what we just saw is that we started by understanding the shared responsibility when it comes to security and compliance. So to demonstrate the security and compliance of the AWS side, you can use AWS Artifact you know, to download the documents that you need and submit to your auditors as audit artifacts. And then you saw how to get that visibility you need to start building checks and how to remediate out of compliance items, you know, to scale. And then once you know how to do that, basically you are now capable of saying, I'm going to automatically and centrally gather that evidence to generate a report, but for my side of the shared responsibility line, right? Okay. With that, I'll hand it over to Mark, who will conclude. Thanks very much, Mustafa. So uh, just to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, hope, hopefully that's given you a good good uh, end to end example of how, how these different services can work together. We wanted to leave you with a few uh, key takeaways. So, so one, uh, as Mustafa mentioned, uh, we do have the shared responsibility model, but, but really the key here is to design with compliance and operations in, in, in mind. So the customers that we've seen who have, who have given the forethought and um, gone through the effort to automate and integrate these services have a much easier time with compliance uh, rather than it being an afterthought. Um, as we talked about, the, while those different uh, services can work uh, standalone, really the power does come in uh, by using them together to form, a, to form a solution end to end. And obviously automation is really the key to tie everything together. So we did want to uh, also leave you with some resources. I'll leave this slide up for a bit. Um, the, uh, the cloud operations video on, on the left is the launch video for AWS cloud operations to give you an idea of uh, what's encompassed there. Activation days, uh, we have a, a sign up uh, uh, link here to dig into more detail on the individual services. Uh, and then of course our, our blogs and videos that dive into various different topics uh, related. And with that, I just want to thank you all for your time. 
uh, and uh, really appreciate you t uh, joining with us today and enjoy the rest of your day.